Now let's invite on the stage Atanas Dinchev from Ray Cloud. Good luck. Thanks. Hey everyone. Ooh, that's a big voice I have apparently. So, do I start right now? Sure. No, no, okay. My name is Atanas. I'm one of the founders of Ray Cloud. Altogether, we're four people. We are developing a cloud gaming service, uh, which is a seamless cross-platform gaming experience with a focus on indie games, which are currently dramatically underrepresented in... Alrighty. Uh, and, and the clock is not working, so you have all the time in the world. I, here. I'm confused. There's, there's something moving there, but anyway. Uh, indie games are underrepresented in competitive cloud gaming platforms. What we do is we allow our users to play and access a variety, variety of games on pretty much any internet-enabled device. Um, in terms of the business model, the easiest way to uh, describe it would be uh, by comparison. And here I'm going to hit you with something uh, that you just heard, which is Spotify, but this time it's for gaming. Uh, and when I say that, what I mean is that uh, we charge a flat monthly fee, and then we do uh, profit sharing with the developers, which essentially allows them for the first time to monetize their content uh, based on playtime instead of ads or the typical premium single purchase model, which is currently dominating the gaming space. Um, in terms of the market, the cloud gaming market is growing at a ridiculous pace at around 200% per year, uh, and it is projected to go above $11 billion in 2025. Uh, within this market, we are targeting uh, to create a platform for indie developers which is very accessible and welcoming uh, and basically allows them to easily monetize uh, their content on demand. During the past six months, we have been developing our MVP, which already works, uh, and you can try it out. Uh, and we've also been conducting various interviews with publishers, developers, and potential users of the platform which uh, gives us the feeling that uh, we have a pretty good understanding of our go-to-market strategy. Uh, at this stage, we're looking for a flexible investment to essentially start growing the library of games, which, as you probably understand, uh, is the most important thing, uh, which is going to contribute to the potential success of our platform. And this concludes my pitch. Thank you. Thank you. So. So indie, indie developers are independent developers, right? They are not... Not necessarily. Uh, indie developers are developers who are, don't have a publishing contract with the leading major publishers. Uh, and you, in, you can think Microsoft or Sony. So uh, you can still be an indie developer and have a publisher, but, but if it's not a major publisher, uh, then you're still indie, if that makes sense. Yep. So you're pretty much building a catalog from those games where people can go and play, like players can find the game and play? Yeah, um, we want to bring the Spotify uh, idea to gaming. Uh, and up until recently, it wasn't really doable. Uh, all of the major uh, cloud gaming competitors pretty much started in 2017. So it's still very early days and uh, there are a very few large competitors. We are betting on the fact that none of the large competitors are either open, uh, you can't upload your game uh, or easily submit it to the platform. Uh, you have to go through like a bunch of uh, complicated legal stuff and they need to want to have you there. While we are aiming to be open, essentially an app store for games which can be monetized based on playtime. And uh, the players are paying for the games where they play? The main or? difference is that uh, current cloud gaming platforms uh, mostly bet on you buying the game somewhere else. What we are saying is different. Uh, we don't require you to buy the game anywhere else, but if you pay our subscription, you can have access to it. So it's pretty much the Spotify thing. You yes. can do advertising and then make some people pay a subscription for like uh, an upscale version of it. Or... Sorry, I didn't understand. It. Can you? I think it? in Spotify you can still listen if you pay nothing. You just listen to advertising, right? 
Yeah, we, we have been considering like the lowest kind of premium tier that Spotify has. The issue with us and having like an ad supported tier, purely ad supported tier, is the fact that our infrastructure is very expensive. So um, running and streaming games compared to storing and like streaming music is, I'm not going to tell you how much time is more expensive, but very, very expensive. It's more complex. So uh, essentially, I don't think that currently we will be able to support a, a pricing tier or a freemium only ad based tier. I see. Thank you. Okay, that, thanks for the presentation. Um, I have two questions. First of them, how are you going to make sure that there are enough players and enough uh, publishers on the platform? Because this is always the biggest problem for multi sided businesses. I mean, how are you going to uh, provide people on the platform from the both sides? And then, can you tell us a bit more about the team? You mentioned that you have four people. Can you tell us about your background? Sure. Um, so. My background is interactive application development. Um, I was running a small studio developing basically any type of real-time interactive application for advertisement and culture. We've been doing everything from set design for operas and theaters to projection mapping, pr like promotional stuff for Nissan and Audi. So my background is real-time computer graphics and my team's background is uh, full stack web development, DevOps, uh, and game development in 3D. Um, those are my two other technical co-founders, and we have a fourth co-founder who is also an entrepreneur, uh, Teodosi Teodosiev, uh, who is an alumni of Y Combinator, and he's kind of our main strategic uh, voice within the company. He helps us to uh, essentially target the American investment market. Um, and the to go back to your first question, which is how are we going to go about getting people, uh, I don't really think it's going to be that much uh, of a difficult issue once we have a library. So in our case, chicken or the egg, uh, in our case, the first thing that we need to do is uh, essentially onboard developers and publishers, essentially. Uh, and then with uh, advertisement, we are going to be able to get uh, people on our platform because currently, the leading cloud gaming platform only has around 750 indie games. And annually on Steam, that's just Steam, not counting mobile devices and mobile platforms, uh, there are around 10,000 games. So there's a huge pool um, of diversity that if we manage to onboard, uh, we will be able to get users. Okay, thanks. And what are the business models of these competitive uh, platforms? And why would they select publishers, select you rather than them? Um, well, I guess it's the same question. Why do you have a HBO Max subscription in addition to a Netflix subscription? And I think it comes down to well, the content. Well, billion dollar businesses, so it's yes. not exactly the same. Uh, it comes down to content. You want to have access to something that's not available on one or the other. Um, and again, our focus was, is indie games and all other major platforms focus on double and triple A games. And is the, the business model diff different, like the way these platforms yes, uh, reward Yes, most publishers. of those platforms, in exception to actually the largest one, which is run by NVIDIA, are run by companies which are also publishers and distributors of games, Microsoft and Sony. Those are two and three. The fourth is Amazon, which is kind of in the middle. Um, and they do not profit share to developers. They acquire the rights to publish and essentially distribute the games on demand on their streaming platforms, and the developers get one lump sum. While with us, it's not like that. And how many publishers do you think you need in order to be attractive for players? I would say that anything that gives us the ability to offer more than the current maximum number of the next competitor. Currently, that's 750. So, so you need seven, more than 750 games in order to be like, uh, attractive? Yes, in order to have a, a realistic uh, marketing statement, okay. which is competitive. Mm. And what's your strategy on, on onboarding this? Um, well, this is the main reason why we're looking for funding. Yeah. Um, we've evaluated the process of onboarding, essentially the technical and also support and human process, because a lot of this has to do with communicating with developers. Um, and we have a very good understanding of what teams, uh, both technical and support teams, we need to be able to scale to this point. But you'll be calling each publisher one by one or emailing yes. them? Or what's yeah. the other way? Um, 
essentially, uh, currently, most of the rights for distribution are hold, uh, held at, in publishers within the gaming industry. So uh, most publishers have, even indie publishers, have libraries of hundreds of games, which is good for us. So if we manage to onboard a publisher, we get access to this library to distribute. Uh, and then comes the technical aspect of onboarding, which is to go in and set up uh, the games, basically, so they can run in a cloud environment. But that's actually not that slow or hard. All right, thank you. Basically, how much funding do you need? Excuse me? How much money do you need? Well, <laughs> how much money do you have? No. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, best case scenario for this stage of our funding, I would say $300,000 at a $6 million valuation. But we are very flexible. Um, and this is essentially a gap stage. Flexible Obviously, your investors, uh, so you're going to be flexible upwards. So, um, yeah, we are very open to discussions, and uh, almost half of this investment is going to go towards uh, me running the next funding um, round uh, in other investment markets, because I believe that... Bulgaria is traditionally kind of small in this sense. How much money, in your vision, will the company need? I mean, like in the next five years, how much funding do, do you need? I really don't know if I should share these numbers here, but we have a very detailed financial model and plan that I would be more than happy to share with you, and all those answers are visible there. So my next question will be, with the 300,000, are you going to onboard the first publisher or not? Yes. How many publishers are going to have with 300,000 funding? We are targeting around 100 games within a year. Which may be one publisher, or it could be yeah. like two publishers. Yes, yeah. one publisher. Uh, what will be the reason a publisher comes to you? Um, in the normal sales cycle within the traditional game uh, monetization is essentially release day and the first week after the release date. Publishers focus their advertisement efforts extremely on the release date. And most of the games, especially indie games, realize more than 90% of their revenue uh, within the first week after release. And then the income trickles down because the publishers, they shift their advertisement focus to other products and games that they're pu publishing. Uh, so essentially the developers don't stop earning money after the initial marketing push. This is where we come in. We don't tell them that we want any exclusivity or anything like that. Uh, we just tell them, come on, get on board uh, on our platform, and uh, whenever somebody plays your game, you get additional money based on playtime. And our platform also gives the ability for new players who wouldn't normally buy into the experience to test out their games. So it's like also has a social and discovery element. Okay, thank you. Thank you too. Thank you. Don't forget to.